everybody. Welcome to an episode of Coffee Molly. It's just you and me today. And I'm going to be talking about my trip to Yellowstone. And you may remember last time, all I had was that cheetah print shirt. I now have a Yellowstone mug. I have a Yellowstone shirt. Several. I'm all Yellowstoned. So, I feel qualified to talk about my week in Yellowstone from a photography perspective. This is not, I am not a pro landscape photographer. I consider myself an amateur, better than average vacation photographer. And I think I can help you to improve your vacation photography. And if you go into Yellowstone, I'm gonna give you some tips so that you can make it work for you. when you go on vacation, it's not a photography trip. So you're there with your husband or your wife or your family. And in our case, this time we were there with our whole family and it was wonderful. But when it comes to photography, I can't take all the time I want to shoot images because it's their vacation too. It's my husband's vacation. And, you know, I need to be sure that I can know what I want to shoot, have my camera dialed in, and shoot it fast. And I think that helps a lot with vacation photography. Another thing about Yellowstone, you really need to plan out where you're going to go. It's massive. The park is larger than the state of Rhode Island. Driving distances are far. Traffic in the summer is horrible. And... It's just, you could forget about always getting the good light. You're gonna have to deal with some bad light. You might have to shoot some things in less than ideal circumstances, like out the window from the passenger seat across your spouse who's driving with the hopefully he'll open the window for you while you're trying to dial in those settings. So be ready. First thing I want to talk about is I've been to Yellowstone twice and I've always gone in the summer but this year we went high season last time we went the week of Labor Day uh, if you want to avoid crowds I would strongly suggest you don't go in the summer however the weather was lovely when you go to Yellowstone you're basically going to go for I categorize it three ways you've got your scenery which is stunning and everywhere. You've got your geothermal areas, which are mind blowing and not everywhere, but they are within a certain area. And then you've got your animals, they move. So they can be a little tricky. If you can get into the park as early as you can. If you get in early, you're going to beat the crowds. And when I say early, I mean before 9 o'clock. Really, ideally, you should be in the park 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. You'll get better light. There are some things that are better early in the morning than others. For example, if you can get your butt up early, which I did not do, and get to Lamar Valley, where the animals are, you might actually see a wolf. You will see more wildlife, and you will have less traffic. However, if you get your butt to the Grand Prismatic bright and early, it's a stunning thermal. It'll be cooler. Grand Prismatic is full of hot, steamy water. And it actually can be harder to see because the steam kind of steams up some of the images, some of the color. So I would suggest trying to hit the Grand Prismatic when it's not so cool. And if you can get out really early, get out to the animals as early as possible. So first, I'm going to talk about the animals. There's basically three ways you're going to see animals. You're going to see them in the two main valleys, Lamar Valley and Hayden Valley. Lamar is up north, Hayden is down south, and they're be both beautiful. You're also going to see them on the side of the road. And so you need to be ready, like basically, I brought two lenses. I brought my 70 to 200 with a two time extender so I could get out to 400 millimeter and I brought that exclusively for animals. Then I brought my 24 to 105 so that I could shoot landscape 
and I could also shoot the geothermals. That worked out pretty well, but honestly, I wish I had a wider angle lens for the landscapes, for the Grand Prismatic, for some of the, the bigger things. And I actually tried to rent one, but they were out. There's only one camera shop in West Yellowstone, and they didn't have a lens that would work for me. So, word to the wise, if you really want a nice wide angle, rent it and bring it with you. Don't be a lazy butt like me and say, I don't want to haul all that in my luggage. I should have hauled it. I should have rented it and hauled it. Animals. You want a telephoto lens. Why? They're dangerous and they can kill you. They can gore you. They can run and trample you. But if you've got a telephoto lens, you're not worried. You're going to get the shot because you're going to have the reach. For example, I'm going to tell you a little story. My husband and I are driving along and I've got my 70 to 200 millimeter lens on my camera with the two time extender ready to go. I've got my settings for a thousandth of a second because I know that if I see something, there's no time to go grab the tripod. There's just not. He doesn't even want to take the time anyway. He'll pull over for me if I scream. But he doesn't want to pull over and have me screaming and yelling and then waiting for me to set up my tripod and then the animal's gone and then I'm waiting. So I just set it fast shutter speed. I got everything set. It's ready to go. So basically I set it into shutter priority, one thousandth of a second, and I let my ISO go on auto. Not my usual settings, but I find for me it works well for wildlife. So I say to Mark, so if I see like a cool animal and I want you to pull over, what do you want me to say? He goes, well, you know, say pull over. I'm like, I don't think I'm going to remember that, but all right, I'm going to try. I'm going to say pull over because that's what you want. So I see a bear. Do you think I remember to say pull over? No, I'm just sitting there in the passenger seat screaming, bear, there's a bear, there's a bear, there's a bear. So he's like, would you like me to pull over? Bear! He pulls over. So I found the bear. Uh, at one point, the bear kind of got out of my sight, and he was definitely closer than I should have allowed him. And I did take the shot, but then I did go in the car. He had the door open for me. He was ready so that I could get in the car and I could shoot from the car. Luckily, it was a black bear, and I learned black bears come in any color. They don't just come in black. And um, I got some sh great shots of the black bear, and we moved on. So that's your side of the road. You don't know when it's going to happen. Animal sighting. Then there's Hayden Valley. We took the family to Hayden Valley, and it's beautiful and it's majestic. And my husband and I love to bicker about which one we like better, Hayden Valley or Lamar. I personally am a Lamar fan. He thinks Hayden is prettier. They're both lovely. But it's fun to have something to bicker about. So we took the family to Hayden and we saw buffalo. You want to see buffalo? Go to Hayden, go to Lamar. You'll see buffalo. They were everywhere. There's herds of buffalo. There's mother cat mothers feeding their calves. There's big bison crossing the road in front of your car. Don't get too close. For some reason this year, tourists have thought it's fun to go pet a bison. You don't pet the bison. He's a wild animal that can kill you. Just use your telephoto lens, stay a safe distance away, and shoot the bison. That's all you have to do. The other location is Lamar Valley, which is the one I prefer. And there's a few reasons I prefer it. One, for some reason, the buffalo do seem to get closer to the road. Also, they have pronghorns, which are like one of my favorite little animals. They're like an antelope, but they're not an antelope. They're, they're just a really beautiful little being that kind of looks like an antelope. And they're shy and they're hard to get. And I was lucky to get them this time. And that was very exciting for me. Um, I love the pronghorn. The never, I don't think they ever come to Hayden, but they're almost always in Lamar, or sometimes you'll see them by the North Gate. And they are also the fastest mammal in North America. So be ready and have a fast shutter speed for those guys. The other thing I liked about Lamar was that there was a path that you could take down to this river area, and the buffalo were on the other side of the river, and they were just... They're like, there's a good sized river between us, but you could hear them snorking and 
smiling and, and, and I found that quite interesting. So anyway, to recap, you want to shoot animals, be ready for them on the side of the road because they could be anywhere. You can also go to Lamar and you can go to Hayden where you're more likely to see some good animals. Scenery is everywhere. If you could get to, I believe it was called Stone Tower Falls, it was very pretty. It's also where my tripod decided to break, but if your tripod breaks and you want to take a long exposure of that waterfall, well, I just found a post and used that for a tripod, set my camera on it, did about a fifteenth of a second exposure and was able to capture the motion. We didn't get to Artist Point, but if you like waterfalls, get to Artist Point. We did get there last time we were there in 2013 and it's, it's beautiful. The last is the geothermals, and, and I love the geothermals. I mean, we were so fortunate. And so you've got Old Faithful. Everybody knows about Old Faithful, and it's cool. And for those of you that aren't aware, it's not on an actual schedule. They basically figure out when it's going to go next based off of the prior eruption. So they look at the volume, and then they look at how much and how long. And then they can figure out, based off of decades of data, oh, it's expected to go off in the next... 45 minutes, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, whatever, and they'll post it. So it's hard to plan that one far out because you never know when that guy's going to blow, but it's okay. While you're at Old Faithful and you get there and she's not going off for an hour, you can go ahead and explore the area. And when we were there, we went and explored the whole boardwalk area with all of the thermal features, which were beautiful. Honestly, I liked them better than Old Faithful. Um, the other thing that's my very, 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 very favorite, in case you can't tell, it's my very favorite area, is Norris Geyser Basin. And we got so lucky. I think Norris Geyser Basin knows it's my favorite. We got to Norris Basin and Steamboat was going off. Steamboat didn't used to go off much at all. Lately, it goes off every couple of weeks. Think about this one day every couple of weeks. We're there for a week. We caught it. We were very excited. It's impressive, a lot more impressive than Old Faithful. But, you know, whatever. If you want to go see Old Faithful, you know, it's kind of iconic. But Steamboat, amazing. Norris Basin, amazing. It's just so alive. And the geysers and the thermal features are so different from each other. And then there's the porcelain basin, which to me, it looks like it was painted. It looks like a painting. There was a cave that was like called Dragon's Breath Cave, and it was just so cool, this cave with steam coming out of the mouth of the cave. And there was also a geyser that was spewing like spray, and it created a rainbow, and the rainbow was in a full circle, and it touched me, and I felt very blessed because I got touched by the rainbow of a geyser, so I was the pot of gold. Another place that my husband and I always enjoy going to is called Mammoth, and it's another geyser area, and there's a Lower Mammoth and an Upper Mammoth, and Lower Mammoth is where most of the tourists go, and it's easier parking. It's a lot easier parking. It can be difficult, but it's still easier parking. It's where all the tour buses go. If you've got a, a vehicle that can, you can get up and park at Upper Mammoth, or if you're in a camper, I think you have to park outside and walk about a half mile in. Upper Mammoth is just blows you away amazing. So go to Upper Mammoth. And if you go into the Mammoth tourist area where the food and the hotel and the visitor center, you might see a couple dozen elk. If you're there during rutting season, which is usually around September, I have heard that sometimes the male elk will see your their reflection in the side of your rental car and like charge it. So, you know, maybe rent, like, uh, something that's not so reflected. Don't get a black car in September. But Mammoth Geyser, base, Mammoth Geyser area is phenomenal. Okay. So, I'm going to do another episode about the trip. And I'm going to be talking about the geysers and how I used the polarizing filter to really enhance my images. And I will tell you that that particular piece of equipment was super valuable for water features. Not so great for animals because it's just cutting your light. And honestly, if you wanna shoot the animals, I would just go fast shutter speed, fast as you can get it, and you know, shoot a telephoto lens. You'll get your animals, they're awesome. 
So I want to thank you for joining me on Coffee with Allie about my Yellowstone trip. And I hope you've enjoyed the images and I hope you go. And if you do go, leave something in the comments and let me know. And if you want to go, leave a question in the comments. I've been twice. I'm happy to answer based off of my experience. Also, if you have any comments or if you've got a tip of your own on how you made better photography, then leave it. Leave it in the comments. I, I, I would love to engage. I will answer you. So thank you very much for joining me. And if you enjoyed this, don't forget, like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. And thank you so much. I'll see you next time.